Good afternoon. I think it's afternoon. Uh, I'm down here at the John Kill Motel in Bisbee, Arizona, run by the wonderful Sterling and Eva. And I'm walking over here because I did some laundry and it's drying. Some pretty bikes, pretty flowers, pretty bike. Yeah, I'm here for a couple of days, basically editing footage. And this motel is awesome. But over here is my laundry, which better be dry by now. So, even Sterling have been wonderful hosts. This place is awesome. Bisbee's really nice. I had never really spent any time here before. And I'm really enjoying it. And then on the 15th, bright and early, I'm going to start the BDR. I'm going to pack up my laundry, go back to the room, and continue editing. <laughs> I'm almost done with the first video for New Mexico, so there's that at least. And just continue and enjoy my stay in Arizona. So I'll catch you later. Eventually. Welcome to the meetup. Not everybody's here yet, but good group so far. Some nice bikes. There's the And all of the Moscow. There's the uh, new BDR, or I guess the uh, Overland Expo build. I love the graphics. I, I didn't go that one. We had, I ended up passing out. There's Dash sleeping. And all the guys in the village. And the coolest looking Tenere I've ever seen. Good lord. Upshift did some new graphics for Moscow. I love this pattern so much. God, this thing's cool looking. Just hanging out here. It's still early. It's only like 1 o'clock or something. But, uh, should be a fun time. Catch you later. <laughs> Here to go ride. for too long because I'm just setting off for the monument but just got gas zero all my stuff out let's do the thing 30 minutes to the start of the monument I do have earplugs in because it's gonna be 30 minutes of riding Bisbee is freaking cool man I don't think I'd ever really spend any time here I really like it had a great time at the meetup. Got to talk to Ash from Moscow Moto finally. Talked to her a bunch actually yesterday, so that was really cool. And just a really all around good group of people. So, a success. And we are back on the BDRs. And about 125 miles to Benson, I believe, is the first end of the segment. The official start is the sign for the Coronado National Monument. So they had a grass fire go through on the other side. We'll all show you when I get to it, but the road is apparently open, so that's the good news at least. One of the guys that I met when I first got to the John Kill Motel, Don, was on a Rally 900 Triumph and he 
got all the way up to basically the start of the buggy on rim and broke his frame in half on his bike. Not sure how that happened yet, but it was rather catastrophic. He's fine, the bike is not. Pioneer Pass is still closed, unfortunately, between Globe and Young, so I'm gonna have to be on pavement for that whole section, which kinda sucks, because Pioneer Pass is a ton of fun, but apparently it has washed out quite badly and is basically a dirt bike only route for a while. And it sounds like they had a, fir a fire of some kind up there, and so all of those roads are closed for right now. The only real technical riding I'm going to get into today will probably be the Los Cienegas area and uh, the Empire Ranch, I think. And it is the 15th. Overland Expo doesn't start till the 20th. I believe I can check in on the 19th to camp, like in the afternoon. So I will probably plan on doing that. But I got plenty of time to get to Flagstaff. So no rush, it's just a question of how soon do I want to try and get out of the heat. <laughs> Alright, there's dirt. This is Montezuma Pass. Really pretty, just not, you know, technical or difficult at all. That's a good couple of days off. I got basically a video and a half done. So once I get to Overland, I should be able to finish editing that one real quick and knock out a second one. That'll cover me all the way into July. I don't want my rear facing to just be a sky cam. There's only so much I can do. Sunita, 55 miles. Canelo Pass, which is after the fire area, is 35 miles. And Benson is basically 117. We'll see how many Border Patrol people I see out here. I would imagine I'll be one of the only non-Border Patrol vehicles out here for a while. I would love to run into a group of motorcyclists and be like, hey, mind if you get another? <laughs> La Cienegas is really the only part of it that I'd like to have somebody to ride with, other than, you know, further up north where it starts getting pretty gnarly. It is really pretty out here, though. Not nearly as wet and green as it was last time I came through. I don't think there's gonna be too many flowers and everything blooming this time before all the cactuses were in full bloom and it was gorgeous, but it's so dry right now. Oh, there's Border Patrol. At least a car, he's not in it. So last time I came through here, I was with Gavin. And unfortunately I found out earlier this year that back in April or May of 2021, Gavin actually passed away. Which is just really sad. His wife contacted me and we talked a little bit. But yeah, he he's no longer with us. And thankfully I have, you know, the videos and stuff from the trip. That was really a lot of fun and he was a really good riding partner. Let's see, it's the 15th. I want to say that I started this route almost exactly two years ago. It was around this time for sure. But yeah, basically two years ago. Five days to get to Flagstaff. I get the feeling I'm probably gonna have a day off just because I don't want to get to Flagstaff super early. But at the same time, I know that I'm gonna be able to cover ground pretty quickly on this route by myself. Yeah, I mean, it's 79, 80 right now. It's gonna probably be 100 degrees today. Oh, yeah, I love all these little scrub oak and trees and all this stuff. It's so pretty back here. It's almost too bad that it's right on the border because the amount of border patrol they have to have around here is ridiculous because I'm sure the trafficking that goes on is extensive. You know, you have relatively easy access to roads. I would have to think they, they get a lot of people trying to come through here, get picked up by, you know, tourists, quote unquote. Here's some of the fire. Here's looks like where the fire ended. And jump the road there. Going straight. Damn, yeah, it really, really got all that. The roads definitely make pretty effective fire breaks a lot of the time. But if the wind's blowing hard enough, you can see what happens. And the unfortunate part is after the fire goes through, then the border patrol and everybody has to look for 
bodies of people if they happen to be trying to cross through here. The sign said a careless match destroys. I don't know what caused this, but you know, they're not wrong. It's like 80% of wildfires are human caused. Grass fires move so fast, especially when it's windy. There's, you know, there's cases where you could not outrun a moving grass fire. You can see back there, the, the fire front could have been several miles wide. So, even running perpendicular to it, you're running for your life for several miles. We will cross back through the burn area after I turn north from the border. Uh, there's people. Interesting. Why are there people? You guys okay? Uh, I need information. I, I want to go to the Park Lake. To where? Park Lake. Park Canyon Lake. I saw the plate. The plate over there. But I walk and walk and walk. I don't see. It, I, it doesn't say. It doesn't show it on my map. This, the, the plate over there says 9 miles. But I walk and walk and walk. I don't see. Yeah, well, I mean, nine miles is a long way. Where did you park at? Yeah. Where did, where's your car at? The park, Canyon Lake. No, where's your car? It's a far away, man. I, honestly, I would probably go back to your car. Because it's going to get, because it's only going to get hotter. I mean, there's at least cell phone reception here, but, I mean, I mean, look at my map here. Like, that's where we are, is the blue dot. There's nothing out here. Do you need me to call somebody for you? Cause I mean, we don't have any anything here, you know, for call uh, someone help. That's right. I mean, I have reception. So Hold on a second. Let me get my helmet off, and I can. Oh God. That's why I followed the plate over there. It's a nine miles. Yeah, but I mean, that's a long way to walk. Uh, you maybe you show nothing. No, there's there's nothing this way. It's all it's all like ranches and farmland and stuff. So I don't know what I don't know what park that would be, but let's try this. Because obviously I can't give you a ride. <laughs> well, not. I don't know. Hi, my name is Brady. I am out here, kind of near the border, and over in like the Coronado National Monument area. And I just came across two people that are walking, and they're probably three or four miles from their car. They were trying to get to park lake reservoir or something like that or lake i don't know i can't i can't find it on my map i'm on a motorcycle but they're they're in the middle of nowhere and they don't have any water they're they're okay they're conscious and everything but they they, they need help get out of here because <laughs> no they have nothing they have a bottle of like one liter bottle of waters and that's it do you have a do you have a ping from my phone by any chance i can if that works easier okay i'll do that all right. Bye. I need to call her on another number. <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna send, but they're gonna work on getting somebody out here to, to help you out. Where are you from? We're from Florida, but now you come to visit the mountain. But yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I've, I've ridden through here on my motorcycle before. There's nothing out here. No, they're not in distress, but they're out of water, and we're. And they're from Florida, you said. That's what they said. Yeah. Yeah, whoever gets out here. All right, thank you. All right, they're gonna send somebody over here. She didn't say, but I'm, I can't imagine. I mean, I, I literally saw six Border Patrol cars on my way in here, so there's gonna be somebody in the area. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean it's 80 plus degrees. You're not gonna make it another three miles. Just, I would wait till they come out and help you out. Do you need some water? I have. Please, man. Yeah. I have all this stuff like you know if you don't have water and food you could you could absolutely die out here thank you very much good bless you okay yeah i don't know i would i would just say here okay 
I just spoke to another dispatcher about two people that are down here by the border at the Corn Auto National. Okay, they I gave them a little bit of water and they're now walking uh, eastbound on this road. So they I'm I'm assuming that they came across the border because they didn't seem interested in hanging out for somebody to show up. They're sitting down by a sign over here that for one of the cattle guards. But they weren't interested in hanging around, and I wasn't obviously going to force them, so... Yeah, I will continue on my way, but they're about 100 yards east of me on the road. I, yeah, they could, should be pretty easy to find. <laughs> they're the only people I've seen out here other than Border Patrol, so... Alright, thank you. Alright, I don't know what's going on with that, but... The dispatcher said, basically, no reason for me to hang around. They've got to be coming from coming over the border. I gave them a little bit of water. They don't seem to want to stick around, so hopefully Border Patrol will get over here and talk to them. There's no way that they drove out here. I would have seen their car. There's nowhere else to park. And that's not the direction that they were walking initially. They were walking this way. So, you got one liter of water each, which is completely gone. You got nothing with you. I mean, it's 85 degrees, dude. You ain't gonna make it another two miles. You will die. At least they were nice. You know, it would suck if they were super aggressive or anything. Hopefully they don't try and like hide in the bushes or anything if Border Patrol comes. But they had no idea where they were. I'm trying to get to Nogales? No, dude, Nogales is 80 miles away. <sighs> oh, hi, Havelina. How you doing? Just saw one of them sad really really sad i'm glad that they'll be okay but yeah it's just a really sad situation overall here's my turn uh hi cows pardon me Arizona rocks. <laughs> I was the one who called about those two people and uh but yeah as soon as they heard somebody was coming out they're like okay i'm just gonna go walk down this way and they were walking back the way that they were were coming when i saw him he asked me where nogales was i'm like dude it's 80 miles away like you're not walking to nogales so they had no idea where they were at it was a little bit there's a ranch like maybe a mile from where they were at where i saw them and they were walking back east the last time i saw them they were in the middle of the road when I saw them. I hope they don't try and hide from you. They don't, they don't got shit. They're not going to make it two more miles. Yeah, I hope you find them. They ain't going to make it much further. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. Good, yeah, good luck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, what can you, I mean, what can you do, you know? Oh, yeah, that guy got lucky. 
he probably had a stressful couple of days when this fire came through. Crap. See there, I can feel the bike being a little bit hot. This is one thing I've been very impressed on this bike is it doesn't really feel hot almost ever. My KTM would get so hot. Both of them, the 990 and the 690, you'd just be cooking. Like, God, this bike is warm. And this thing, I've almost never noticed any kind of heat coming off of the bike. All right, I wanna say I pop out onto the pavement here, pretty much right here. Get into Sunita. Probably won't get gas, but I probably will get a snack. Cool off a little bit. Seconds 57 miles to Benson. So I got a call from the sheriff's office while I was at the gas station back there having a snack and a drink. And they confirmed that the Border Patrol had gotten those two people. And the way they put it was they apprehended them, but basically they got them out of there. Because, yeah, it wouldn't have taken much longer and they would have been in real trouble. I do not regret calling the sheriff's office. Those people needed help. Whatever your opinions are on people crossing the border illegally, whatever, like, the biggest thing is, is they needed out of there. They were gonna die if they stayed out there. Welcome back to La Cienegas Conservation Area slash Empire Ranch, I wanna say is what it's called. See how many gates I have to open. La Cienegas is really easy to bypass if you decide to, because you pop back out onto the hardball just a few miles up the road. So if this is really bad or you just don't feel like messing with it, you just keep going up the highway. I mean, it gets pretty technical, but it's really pretty fun. I just don't know how loose all the rock's gonna be. That's that's the biggest question. Got a grass fire there. There's some sand. Washboarded sand too, that's fun. 95. Yep, here's sand. Gates open. Let's go through there. Yeah, rocky and loose, but relatively straightforward. I'd love to find a shady spot and take a break, but I already know that's, <laughs> there ain't gonna be much out here. Yeah, now I'm hot, my feet especially, but it is uh, warm. Oh, that's deep. Yeah. Damn it. pedal yeah my brake pedal is bent but I'll fix it later now I'm really hot yeah we're gonna first gear this no heroes Honestly, even that bit right there wasn't that bad. I just got cross rutted. Like it, it crossed me up and threw me. This one's pretty rocky.
this is really bad. Yeah, biggest problem I'm dealing with right now is heat. The riding ain't that bad. 100 degrees and working off-road is not easy. First, here's the climb that I remember. Yeah, it's a, about the same shape. here to the right. I'm gonna stop and take a break. Yeah, I think I'm stopping in. Benson, yeah. Oh yeah. That's a little gnarlier than it used to be. Come on. Nope. Damn it. Ah. One eternity later. Okay, I'm giving it one try to get to the top. If I drop it. Because I am approaching heat exhaustion. One more fall, and I'm calling for help. It's not, it's really not the terrain. Unfortunately, it's the heat. I am not acclimated and rapidly getting dehydrated. I have water still, so it's not an emergency, but I did take off my armor, so I gotta be really careful. Took it off because I was overheating. All it came down to So I just gotta take it easy and get out of here. Good news is, I do know that that was basically the end of the really hard part. And from here on, it's a lot of stuff like this. Yeah, there's the main road. I'm really close to being out of here. Like the riding's not easy, don't get me wrong. It's definitely not easy, but it's not horrible. I just am super overheated right now. Oh, that's really rocky. I don't remember it being this bad. At least not this bit. I'm not falling again. Went back up 
right here. Oh god, where am I going? I'm going right. I did kind of fix my brake lever at least. Or pedal. It's in a better spot than what it was. So close. <sighs> yep, here's the other gate. Oh, if you think I'm moving slow, it's because I am. Of course I would have a big rock right under my wheel when I went to do that. Oh, okay, oh, that's open. Like, I need you to understand. I'm in the early stages of heat exhaustion. I'm not at heat stroke yet, because I'm still sweating, I'm still functioning, but I'm not all okay right now. Oh God. I need a second, there we go. Was almost a catastrophe. Pretty sure I'm almost out of water. Okay, I'm really close, like a thousand yards or so. And once I hit pavement, I'm gonna drink all the rest of my water and go into Benson and get a room with air conditioning and sit there and drink water and eat salty foods until I feel normal. Probably the only reason I'm even able to keep going is because I did hydrate really well yesterday and didn't drink any alcohol. If I had started dehydrated, I would have f***ed. But yeah, until I'm in better shape and better acclimated, it's going to be easy section city for me. I just don't have it right now to, to force some of these routes. I know it's more entertaining for you guys when I'm working hard and everything. There, I'm finally cooling down a little bit. My legs are still hot, but I don't feel like my torso is sweating like crazy right now. Oh, hi, dear. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you run in this heat. I will say this bike is handling a lot better in the sand. The suspension adjustments that I did to it helped a lot. Can't see and it's deep, so I'm just going. Sorry if there's somebody there. And pavement. Oh, thank God. Oh, I'm gonna keep drinking this, but I'm gonna let you go because that's the last dirt until I'm in Benson, which is 30 miles. I will sign off and I will probably talk to you from the hotel room in Benson. Three hours later. Good afternoon from beautiful Benson. Yeah, I'm not camping in 102 degrees. That was stupid. I'm just downloading footage. That was an eventful day. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some food here in a minute and drink a of water and, and come back and probably edit footage. I will see you probably tomorrow. Uh, I can't get to Flagstaff until the 19th and that will be the plan. So we'll see and I will catch you later.